Hello. Last week's lessons were important ones. In them, we analyzed flip flops, which means we saw how they would behave for a given set of inputs. We also analyzed sequential circuits, which contain multiple flip flops, which again means we observed their behavior for a given set of inputs. Understanding the analysis provides the foundation for design. In design, we start by identifying the behavior we want and then figure out what inputs and circuit structure will get us there. The Rosetta Stone that makes this happen is the transition table. Let's reflect back on the standard flip-flops and see how we can direct changes. First, see if you can answer this question. A D flip-flop currently has Q equal 1, and we want it to go to Q equal 0 on the next clock pulse. What must that D instruction be? The answer is 0. With a D flip-flop, the next output Q value will simply match the current input D value on the negative edge of a clock in this case. Now try the next one. A T flip-flop has Q equal 1 and must go to Q equal 0 on the next clock pulse. What must T be? The answer here is 1. With the T flip-flop, the available modes are either toggle or no change. To obtain that desired change, from Q equal 1 to Q equal 0, then we must be in toggle mode. Therefore, the T instruction must be 1. In this case, that toggle will occur on the positive clock edge. In both of these examples, our goal was the same behavior, having Q change from 1 to 0. But the design was different, an instruction of 0 up top and 1 down below. Why? Because we had different types of flip-flops. The last type of flip-flop is the trickiest because there are two instructions. Let's say a JK flip-flop presently has Q equals 0 and must go to Q equal 1 on the next clock pulse. What must J and K be? There are actually two possible ways to accomplish this. We could place the flip-flop in set mode, which will force Q to equal 1 regardless of its previous value. This is done with j equal 1 and k equal 0. Or we could place it in toggle mode, which will make the present 0 toggle to 1. This is done with j equal 1 and k equal 1. It turns out that k doesn't matter at all in this situation. As long as j equals 1, then k could be either 0 or 1, and we obtain the desired q value. Let's try another one. Remember that there will be two answers. Try to find both. A JK flip-flop has Q equal to 1 and must remain as Q equals 1 on the next clock pulse. What must J and K be? The first answer is to be in set mode, with J equal 1 and K equal 0. The second answer is to be in no change mode, with J equal 0 and K equal 0. In this situation, it doesn't matter what j is, as long as k equals 0. And one last little question that is a key concept for our upcoming designs. What can flip-flops be used as? The answer is 1-bit memory devices. We need sequential circuits to remember things, like how much money is in a vending machine, or what light is shining in a stoplight. Flip-flops will be our building blocks for this memory. The answers to those little puzzles we worked are summarized in these tables. They're called transition tables because they tell us what the instructions must be to cause a flip-flop to perform each transition. There are just four possible transitions. The output Q changes from 0 to 0, from 0 to 1, from 1 to 0, or from 1 to 1. Our most recent puzzle involved a JK flip-flop that started at Q equal 1 and remained at 1. We concluded that J doesn't matter and K must equal 0. That is exactly what we see here. J is an X, which means we don't care what it is, and K is a 0. 
the middle puzzle involved a t flip-flop changing from 1 to 0. We concluded that t must equal 1. And sure enough, we see that same result here. We will often be referring back to these transition tables in our upcoming designs. The good news is that these tables don't change. We simply pick one type of flip-flop to use and then refer back to its transition table. We now have three different types of tables used in this course, true tables, characteristic tables, and transition tables. These can get easily confused, so let's take a minute to distinguish between them. Truth tables are used for combinational circuits, not sequential circuits. They show the outputs that are guaranteed for each set of inputs. As such, they usually hold only zeros and ones, but sometimes x's for don't care conditions. Characteristic tables are what we studied last week and are used for flip-flop analysis. They show how a flip-flop will behave for a given set of input instructions at a specific clock edge. They contain ones and zeros, but also variables like q sub t for the no change in toggle modes. Transition tables are what we just introduced this video. They are also commonly called excitation tables. These are used for flip-flop design, and so swap the sections of a characteristic table. On the left, we see the output behavior. On the right, we see what instructions will cause that behavior. Now put on your hard hat. The foundations have been poured. Next, we will start building some sequential circuits that can accomplish some useful tasks.